What's up everyone? I think it's time because we're about to really get into the construction of, of this garage. So the walls are in, the air conditioning's in, the air conditioning's not really working. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, but we're gonna start doing all of the stuff to make this my garage. Uh, which I think you'll find interesting because this is the same stuff that we, you know, put in other people's garages and design them. And of course, you guys buy parts and pieces of this stuff, which make this all possible. So I want to take you through each little little area of this garage and talk about what's about to happen. Uh, we'll obviously, show you what, what we've already done, but talk to you about what's about to happen, uh, and then we're gonna have. I would guess a few dozen uh, individual videos and all the little parts and pieces that are going to go into putting this together. So the first thing that saddens me, I didn't measure the room. Uh, Kyle did at one point, but I never actually measured it. It's only 1,200 square feet. It feels bigger than that though, I think. Um, but I was thinking it was 1,800 square feet. It's only 1,200 square feet. So it's a 1,200 square foot space. I don't like it when they say on HGTV, great space but it's a 1200 square foot room, uh, which is roughly, it's like 38 feet here and 42 feet there. And um, I don't know what the dimension is. Anyway, it's 1200 square feet. We did a, a, you know, those little laser measuring devices to figure out what's what. So the doors, uh, the doors right now, um, we'll have a video up uh, probably uh, next week. Uh, but the doors I put this, it's a, it's basically a double-sided radiant barrier on the regular junky, we have to pull these by hand, hand-driven roll-ups. Uh, I had a company come out to get me a quote. I'm going to do some CHI. Uh, we're going to test those out with a LiftMaster Professional, the one with the red box on the front. Uh, we're going to do a CHI doors. They aren't high-speed doors. Uh, they're more practical roll-up doors. They're, I believe there are... 17 it's an insulated aluminum slat type door and it'll have a brush it'll have brush seals i'll show you the brush seals in a second how that's going to work um, i don't know how much they are um, so <coughs> there's no company around here that has any experience with them they wanted me to sell me their janky doors but i wanted the chis to try they'll be gray um, but this is going to hold this up for now this is called reflectix uh, the other thing we're going to do is, um, I'll show you in a second when we go outside, show you what the brush seals look like, but we need to seal up these doors because I'm losing like you know, most of the air that gets put in here is getting sucked out of the room. I was actually up, you know, on the ladder, uh, cleaning the door on the outside and it literally felt like a wind tunnel. It was cooler out there than it was in here. Cause there's like a three inch hole where air is just getting, you know, sucked right out the right out the room. And so this Reflectix, uh, the only place I could find it was Menards. Uh, it was like 180 bucks for a roll, a hundred foot roll. It looks like this. Uh, well, again, we'll have a, uh, a voiceover video uh, uh, here shortly, but uh, you can see it's basically two pieces of radiant barrier with some sort of bubble thing in the middle. Uh, it has an R value of R3.7, but the main thing is that when the sun's beating on the door, it, it helps really, you know, rejects some of that heat coming in. So it made a pretty remarkable difference. And then they have their own tape, this own foil tape um, that, um, that you use to you know, tape the seams up. You know, it's not airtight, it's just kind of tucked in the channel here, uh, but it, it certainly does help uh, cool down the doors because that, that's where a lot of the heat comes into the room. And since we're on that subject, I've been searching for, how do you do a brush seal? I think it's commercialgaragedoorsonline.com, but this is a brush seal. Um, we'll walk outside and show you what it looks like. And then you have a channel. Uh, and so uh, this allows us to kind of, um, well, let's just go out and show you instead of me freaking yapping about it. And I'm not going to show you the part that I jank did. It's a two-man job and I was trying to do it one man and uh, it's not good. There's my janky install, but let's go over to the other one. Don't show them that, Mike. So this here is what we're going to do because I don't know, it's going to probably be, it might be six months before we get doors. Uh, because you know, supply chain issues and so I'm not I'm not banking on the doors coming and this isn't a perfect seal um, but this is um, you put the little the little channel on here uh, which holds the brush and then the brush kind of butts up against the door it's going to be more effective at the top you know because the, the slats aren't you know the slats are, are, um, are horizontal not vertical 
and so up at the top is where we lose most of our air uh, and so we'll have a two inch seal on this door and then I'll do a three inch seal on the other door and um, I'm gonna have you know one of my guys do it because I was getting really frustrated with it so but it's gonna look like this all the way up the sides and then when we get the new doors, they'll put their own brushes on and hopefully do a better job than we're gonna do. But it'll at least hold us over because it's, even though it's October here, I mean, it's still 90 degrees every day. Even in the, it'll be in the high 80s all the way through, you know, through the winter in mo most days. So um, we still need to do it. You can see, <laughs> I, uh, my measurement was a little off there. So we're gonna take that down and redo it. That was a, uh, I'm gonna knock this out real quick and turn it into a four hour disaster. So, so we do have, uh, these are you know, fire rated typical commercial doors. I'm gonna just leave these alone. I just need to paint it. For some reason the painters didn't paint that. But we do have um, um, key card entry. Uh, right now it's set to daytime so we can walk in. But if any of the guys wanna come here at night, um, we have cameras so everybody's on, on camera. So. I did, you know, real simple. Um, I'm not, I don't really give a crap about uh, security. So this is a ADT commercial. Uh, I had an ADT system at my house that I just turned on that someone el already installed it. And they've come a long way. You know, it's certainly not OG spec security. Um, but from a simplicity standpoint, I was able to call a company, pay them a monthly fee. They give me key card access. We have cameras, you know, monitoring 24 seven access. Uh, it also does our, I think our, you know, our fire smoke alarm and stuff like that. Helps us a little bit on our insurance. Um, but security here is it's pretty, the building's pretty locked down. Um, I know Jeff came here one time and opened the door and, um, you know, didn't turn the alarm off and the cops had him pulled over and within a few minutes. So, um, it, uh, it certainly does work. So in here, flooring is going to be Swiss tracks like normal. Um, I don't like epoxy. I don't like, this is just a paint. You can see this paint isn't going to hold up very, very long at all. And then the problem with this, I just vacuumed this whole place. Look at all the, look at all the dirt. I need to sweep this again. I vacuumed it like literally a week ago. Uh, and so the beauty of Swiss tracks, which is so counterintuitive, uh, you can see all our Swiss tracks over here, but the beauty of this stuff is it's three quarters of an inch thick and all the dirt goes under it. And so your natural question is, Matt, you know, how do you deal with that? You're, I thought you were OCD. Um, I unfortunately am. Um, OCD, I'm not sure what it has to do with cleanliness and dirt, but um, apparently that's a thing. It's, it's underneath the floor. And then I can vacuum it once every six months. Uh, and that's what we do once every six or seven, eight, 10, 12 months next door. When we vacuum, there's a lot of traffic that goes through there. So the Swiss tracks is gonna go down and the way that we're gonna have to do it is I'm gonna have to start on the doors. I keep walking around funny here. So I'm gonna have to start here. And so the floor will start here and go this way and we'll, we'll, we'll butt it up next to the doors. Like, so we'll push it towards the corner. Uh, and so the edge pieces will kind of kick under the door and seal that. It'll just sort of sit right underneath that lip there. Uh, and so we'll start on that and then we'll work our way back. Um, if you don't start on the door, then you'll have a cut piece on the doorway and then that presents a problem. They do have some things, they have like a connection kit, but you don't want, you don't want that. You want a full tile at the door, improves your odds of the thing not getting messed up, especially since we do need to turn in here and you know, turning on Swiss tracks, especially with really big vehicles can be problematic or if you have welded diffs or issues like that, we'll, we'll be fine with my cars. And then we're gonna work our way back to the Swiss tracks here. Once I get the Swiss tracks done, then I'm able to do my cabinets. Um, it's gonna be kind of tricky. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna put, start to build the floor, come all the way back here. Uh, what I don't wanna do is drive forklifts also Forklifts do fine when you're driving straight and four wheel forklifts are fine on Swiss tracks. We have a three wheel forklift. So that third wheel digs and kicks out. Uh, so it's just not great on the, on the, on the Swiss track. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to have to lift this up because I don't want to cut the flooring around it. I want to put this, my, my mounter, which we'll talk about in a second. I want to put that, you know, on, I don't want to put Swiss tracks under, I want to put it on top of the Swiss tracks. So what we'll do is we'll just leave the tiles out in the square so I can drive the forklift in, lift up my thing, put the, and then connect the floor. Uh, and then, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll come over from this way, we'll connect the floor, and then we'll be able to drive the forklift back out. I'll probably actually lift this thing out of the way and, uh, 
and then you know lift this one up, finish the floor, put you know f bring the floor this way, set this, uh, set the balancer back down. So that's we're going to figure out how to do it, but that that's that's likely the scenario. Then lighting. I wish I had the lighting first. That's what I've been waiting for. Otherwise, I would have had the Swiss tracks done here. The lighting is, um, we're doing Cree LS8s and LS4s. These are 91, 92-ish, like real 92 CRI. That's one of the problems I see with all you guys that are you know, buying. There, I can tell you right now, there's not a single good overhead garage or home light on Amazon. It's just, they're just not. I know you say you have it, but I'm telling you, it's not. They're not, I've bought dozens of them. That Chinese stuff, that knockoff stuff is not good. And anybody who makes any good lights, they hoard it. It took me three years of begging to let Cree sell me, uh, have me sell lights. Because lighting is, is quite, is pretty sophisticated. It's pretty complicated. We're gonna take that complication and we're gonna distill it down to make it so that you can buy it really simply. A Cree LS4 fixture is only like 200 bucks. So it's not, it's maybe, it's maybe twice the cost of some janky, you know, knockoff on Amazon, but these lights are going to be, you know, pretty insane. And so picture, we're gonna have five linear rows that run all the way across. Um, we're gonna carry them. We're probably gonna do it on jack chain, but they'll be, they'll be level all the way across. And, um, and the lights are going to have a circle. So there's a rounded dome or a rounded lens. Uh, they're 5,000 Kelvin is what they're going to be. Uh, and again, the quality of light is where, what we're after here. These are, these are, these are true, you know, because there's, there's 12 different um, R values when you're looking at the full color spectrum that generally lighting manufacturers will use. When an Amazon light says it's 90 CRI, they'll leave out something like the, like the R4 or R8 number. They'll leave out, they'll leave out uh, some of the, you know, like the reds or they'll leave out another number. Give you an average of, they'll pick the three highest and call it that. Uh, so it's cheating. It's kind of like contrast ratios on televisions a lot of times. They're doing it in some sort of you know, vacuum or something like that. They're not getting, they're, they're, they're fudging the numbers in order to jack the spec or they're just flat out making it up. And so not all CRI, uh, color rendering index spec, is created equal. Uh, now the Cree lights need, they need a zero to 10 volt control wire, uh, and then you need some sort of lighting control. We're gonna be doing Lutron Vive. Uh, we're gonna have a Lutron hub here for this whole building. Um, we'll get into all of that. I've been working on Lutron. I'm getting closer, I think. Hopefully when they see the videos we're gonna make on how this is installed, um, hopefully they'll, you know, they'll, um, they'll start to consider letting me sell the stuff. But this is all commercial stuff. But the same thing with Cox hose reels and Krenzel pressure washers and all the stuff, sonic cabinets, all this stuff is commercial. We want, I want professional grade in my garage, whether I'm a professional or not. So the lighting will, will be five complete uh, linear rows where the lights butt up together and are continuous. Uh, and then we'll have full control of the light. So I'll have multiple zones in here. So that way, if it's too much light, we can turn it down. Uh, we're going to have rolling studio lights as well. So when we're shooting a car, we're going to get better angles. And we're going to have, you know, probably have, what do they call those things? Uh, we're going we're to have a crane in here at some point. <laughs> Everybody's always yelling about our angles. And so we're going to have dollies so we can get the camera in and get the shot. We're going to keep that same you and me in my garage, but we want to get the shot. Uh, and so we're going to work on those kind of things as well in here. This is our testing proving grounds. So the next step, once we get the flooring done, lighting's coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's due October 15th. It's also coming to the store. I want to make sure that I love the linear fixtures as much as I think I'm going to, because you saw the ZR troffers I did in my garage at home were not the right kind of fixture for the garage, but there's only you know, one way to find these things out. We're also going to have color shifting lights where you can adjust color temp uh, from, from 2000K up to 7000. Uh, those are called uh, CR troffers. We'll be doing those as well. And then we'll also offer stylus linear and some other types of lighting as well. So all different types of lighting solution that you'll be able to use in your home too if you want to. Because uh, I'll probably be doing free, free commercial in my house. So the um once we get the once we get the lights in here and test it out and figure it out we'll have them in the store but i, I decided i'm going to stop waiting they're due for me october 15th uh, then we'll start to try to order stock of lights you know things take longer now since the supply chain's kind of jacked up 
but uh, so I'm not going to wait to do the flooring and the cabinets and all of that. I'm going to get moving. So my cabinets are going here, and you can kind of see it's hard on camera because the lighting in here is so terrible. But uh, my cabinet array, we're going to take the Sonic MSS Plus that I have in my previous garage studio next door. We're going to put that same cabinet array in this corner. The difference is we're going to take the closets off the end of it. Uh, and so it'll just be one continuous, you know, L shape with uh, the corner cabinet here. Uh, we're going to do Dynaudio Core 59s. Uh, with a NAD C685 that has Dirac Live so I can calibrate for this room uh, the speakers. The speakers are going to be you know, up in the corners of the cabinet array. Uh, and then I'm going to do two core subs in here, which is going to be freaking nuts. So um, I'm going to put the core sub behind the other the, the pillar over here. My lift controller is going to go here, I hope. Um, it might not fit, so I might have to move the lift controller or put the lift controller right on the edge of this beam because this beam ended up being a little bigger than my original measurement. So I don't, I don't know if it's going to fit until we get the cabinets in here and figure it out. I may cut the baseboard out so I can push the cabinet in a little tighter if I have to. Um, so MSS Plus, as well as uh, we're going to do, because I'm always finding that I've always have car parts and stuff all over the place, pressure washers I'm testing. So we're going to do probably five 36, and I have four of them ordered. You can see I put the outlets up here so I could do power in each cabinet. Um, but we're going to do uh, likely five 36-inch closets, and I'm going to do another closet over here, and that shelving for my uh, for my spray bottles, um, so we'll do the 36 inch MSS MSS Sonic closets. So I have room to you know put all my Milwaukee tools as well as um, you know tester products and things like that. Um, I don't like to keep stuff, but as much stuff as I'm playing with, a lot of times like I'll have speakers that I'm listening to and I want to put them in a cabinet uh, as they're making their transition to wherever they need to go. Uh, so the cabinets are going to look pretty sweet. I was thinking about doing. I wanted to do a sink here, but I don't have a drain. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'm just gonna have to rough it. Uh, the plan is, which will be a whole nother series later, the plan is to do an, an overhang, do like a, an attached lean-to, uh, and do an outdoor wash bay. Um, so we'll probably do that at some point. And then um, I also had the guys fingered up my walls, so I've got to paint all the walls again. Um, but I had my electricians, Perry and the guys, do um, uh, Lutron outlets. I didn't do Lutron outlets behind where the cabinets are going to be, um, but this is all, all you know, we're going to have all Lutron outlets, switches, controls. This will all be done with Lutron Pico uh, wireless um, controls um, um, for, for our lighting control that will all communicate back to the Vive Hub, which will be able to control my, from my phone as well. Um, the air compressor and pressure washer area is going to be here. Um, and so we're going to work on, uh, I just tested the KWS 700, which you'll see a video come out here soon. So the big KWS 700 is going to go here. Uh, and Mike and I are going to start to work on creating our own DINI solution. With stuff like um, RV Transformers, DI Rinse Pro, and you know, all these companies that sort of rebrand that same type of uh, type of resin tank, that big ugly tank, um, I want to create something better than that. I want to create something that looks like CR Spotless, um, that is wall mountable, but has the ability to flow, you know, 10 gallons a minute for when we're doing these big pressure washers, uh, and then has easy access to replace the resin. Um, so we're going to work on developing that probably, you know, later next year we'll start working on that but picture kws 700 uh, probably going to shift it over here a bit oh, i had water, water stubbed out but we, we may have to cut the wall and, and move it but at least it's here and um and so pressure washer is going to go here deionizer here and then i'm hoping i have enough room for my 500 pound um, um dry ice tank or or whatever you call it bin uh, insulated bin so my dry ice is going to go here air compressor. This is the five horsepower silenced piston compressor. This is a big insulated shroud that goes around and is sealed. So it goes around the piston. So this is a traditional old school compressor. Uh, this is from FIAC. It's an 80 gallon horizontal, horizontal tank. Uh, it has a refrigerated dryer here right on the side. 
Um, I'm also going to attach a, a desiccant dryer as well. Uh, Scott, Scott, the Dreiss man, has been working on a solution, uh, and so we're going to offer it in the store here soon, which will be a really sophisticated desiccant dryer. So I'm, I'm going to have the darn cleanest, driest air on the planet, as well as we have a 100-pint dehumidifier on this room, as well as a dedicated three-ton AC unit as well. Uh, and so this room is going to be, you know, we're going to be running this at like 45% humidity and we're going to yank any humidity out of here as well for my air. Um, but the way that this thing works is it's a low RPM, operates at 500 RPMs. So it's a, instead of a high, like, like if you go buy a Husky com uh, piston compressor at Home Depot, those operate at 3000 RPMs much, much louder. Uh, so this operates at somewhere around mid, mid 60s, mid 60s, low 70s, depending on how close, uh, close you are in uh, uh, 60 dB, 65 dB, something like that. So I get all the beauties of the, the lower cost and durability of a piston compressor uh, and without all the noise and all the racket. Uh, and so it's appropriate to keep the compressor here because I don't have anywhere else to put it. Uh, and this delivers just shy of 30 CFM at 90 PSI. So, you know, we're getting mid 20s at 100 and 110, 120 C, uh, PSI that we'll be using with our Evo dry ice machine. Uh, and then we're going to bring our Prevost piping up and we're going to run a grid uh, throughout the building. I need to serve my, uh, my mounting and balancing station, so we'll run manifolds there. So we have direct connections for those. Uh, but then I'm going to do uh, four, just like I've done in, in all of my, um, in my last two garages, we're going to do four overhead station so i'll have power and air so we'll have eight reels four power four air that are cornered up to my lift and this is the first time i've ever done this we've designed some garages that, that have done we've done this with but i'm going to do a cornered recessed scissor lift so we're going to cut the floor i don't think you can see it over here there's a little bit of a section so the, it seems like it's far away until you get a car on here but we measured out so the lift is going to front of the lift will be here um, and so, you know, that gives us, a, we need a certain amount of room between, the, so that means the front of the car is somewhere around here, uh, and that gives us room to still open our drawers and, and work. You know, you want the lift as close to the cabinets as possible, but not too close to where you don't have room to open a drawer and walk by it. And so we're doing a Noose Bomb Jumbo 7. I think we're doing a silver one in here. Uh, we're going to cut the floor, re-pour the foundation there, and we'll have the Noose Bomb um, uh, lift recessed in the ground. The key to recessing here is sometimes I'm going to want to park this way. Uh, it's just easier to get in and out. But if the car's on the lift, um, you know, so obviously we need access to the lift, but I want to be able to drive over it uh, whenever necessary. So picture hose reels hanging down, you know, at say whatever, eight feet so I can grab it, but it's not hitting me in the head when I'm walking by. Hose and power on all four corners. Scissor lift so I can do, you know, essentially whatever I want um, short of change in brake lines on a classic car or something like that. You can do pretty much everything on a scissor lift. I can drop the drive shaft. I can drop an engine. I could do, you know, basically whatever I want to do. The only time it becomes a little bit of a problem with scissor lift is some of the Porsches have weird, you know, auto underbody panels. You may have to take a couple of screws off before you put it on the lift. But generally speaking, I can do anything I need to do on a scissor lift, but also get full access. I think it stinks is that you know noose bombs were about 7500 bucks and with material costs and import container costs increased they're close to 10 grand now uh, but it is truly the i believe the best scissor lift on the planet so these walls weren't here um, i shouldn't tell you this but these walls the drywall wasn't here uh, and so actually in here if you followed along with us kind of updating you this is all dense deck which is that like, uh, which is basically exterior drywall, so mold and water resistant drywall. Um, I don't think they use that in showers, but they use it on like exterior porches and things like that. And then they, they did a level five flat, you know, so texture free um, connection. The beauty of this, there was already eight feet of plywood. So we have a nailer all across. We have something to, you know, backer to nail things to or screw things, not nail things, screw things to if we needed to. Um, but the, the nice thing about it is it's pretty silent next door. I was in here ripping into my, you know, audio system. You can hear a little bit of the bass, but it's pretty well soundproof. So that's, that's really good news for us. Bad news is the air conditioner sucks. It's freaking loud as crap, but I, I, we don't even hear it anymore. So we've kind of gotten used to it. 
So after we get the flooring and we get the lighting, we get the cabinets done, um, um, again, Mike is gonna come and do all our airlines and all of that stuff. Uh, I'm going to set up, this is probably gonna end up becoming my office. Um, I did get my office back where you see me do the live streams. Uh, we do all our podcasts there. Um, that's my office again. I'd given it up to Chris. Since we moved all our guys here next door, we'll give you a peek into the Arn building. Um, since we moved all of our media, tech support, uh, and you know the website guys over here, um, we've uh, freed up space for Chris to move into what was the old media office is now his office. And so I got my, my office back, but chances are I'm gonna spend most of my time here. So this setup, I just kind of put it to get the, the, the countertop is not fixed. It's not set up yet. But uh, this is a Sonic MSS Plus array. These are two cabinets we had extra from over there and a countertop that was extra. And I'm like, shoot, I'm gonna make that my desk because I'm gonna spend most of my time over here anyway. And so I already had my Apple Pro XDR display, which I had next door when I lost my office. These are Dynaudio LYD 5s, the new Apollo Solo, uh, which is Thunderbolt powered. Um, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with my, my power and wiring. And then I have a, uh, an, a Dynaudio uh, Sub 18S, which is freaking crazy overkill for this, but you know, that's how I do it. And then my MacBook Pro. And then I have um, Odyssey uh, LCDX headphones with a mono, uh, mono lith or mono price. Uh, a, I think it's AAA, AAA um, uh, headphone amplifier. And then I'll work on my wiring and how it's all wire loomed and all hidden and all of that stuff. But um, this desk setup, I'm gonna have a steel, I think was it steel case? I think that's the company chair. Uh, and then this will probably end up be becoming my desk. I've used some of these for my wiring and some of this uh, D-line Amazon crap from uh, who knows where for my desk. But this setup will be, um, you know, so that I can answer your YouTube comments when I'm here in the garage. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. We'll have Viper chairs, various leaps displayed throughout here. Uh, and then my masterpiece. I don't care that my, my desk is right there. If I do this, I'm going to take extra care when I mount anything. It's only the occasional truck tire. I think it's going to get a little dicey with the amount of room I have here. Um, but this is the, uh, this is the Revolution, uh, Hunter Revolution uh, automatic but mounter. Uh, which if you saw me fumble through my first set of wheels, so my Tesla wheels. Uh, we have a follow-up video coming next week with my Vossen uh, Evo 2Rs, three-piece wheels for the Tesla. Um, I got them refinished. Remember, I tried to do the blue lip on them, which was an epic failure. Um, but these are going to go on the Tesla. And uh, so Hunter is coming out. The guys, this time I'm having them come out to train me and make sure that I do these right because these are like, I don't know, over 10 grand. So I don't want to mess them up. But then we have the, um, uh, so that's the Revolution. Wait. I forget what they call these things. What's the name of this thing? I think, the, is this the revolution? I took the badges off. This is the, this is the bad part. That's the TC42. What do they call that thing? I think that one is the revolution. It's the revolution, and then this is the, this is the road force. Uh, who cares what they brand them? But anyway, this is a road force balancer. Uh, this is the RE13 version with the automatic tire lift, the pneumatic tire lift, uh, and um, you know they're all digitally driven. You know from the from the monitor, it's pretty freaking sick. This sucker. I could have bought another M3, and instead I bought this. Um, it's ridiculous. I know it. It's stupid. Um, I think I can provide Hunter some value. Um, they skipped over in their trainings and their videos and their online content. They skip over a lot of stuff. Obviously, these are made for tire shops uh, for efficiency. Um, but I think that we should all aspire, at least I've been working toward this, aspiring to have these in my own garage. The next step is to have my own Hunter um, um, alive.
rack. Uh, and obviously, I won't be able to fit it in here, but to get one somewhere someday. Uh, but that's the hope. So these need air and power. So I did dedicated. Um, they, they really don't need dedicated, but I did dedicated 20 amp circuits for these. Um, so they each have their own circuit, and then we'll have uh, we'll have airlines running down the side here, so that we can we can mount and balance our own tires. I probably do 10, 12 sets of wheels and tires a year, uh, and so it'd be nice. Maybe I'll do 24 sets a year uh, because now I have access to change things out and to try out different tire sizes. It's also going to afford me the ability to like, well, maybe I can squeeze a little bigger tire on my M3. The only way to find out is to try it. Uh, and it's a pain in the butt when you're going to drive, you know, where we live, you got to drive an hour to go get your tires done. Uh, and um, so now I have it here. I know, you know the, those numbers, that math doesn't work for most of you, but it seems to work for me. You know, what I do is I used to palm hundos to everybody doing my tires. I just take it from one pocket and put it in the other and then um, and then write the check. Uh, I, wrote, I actually, I, I didn't finance these, I just paid for them. But it was uh, a lot of frickin' money. I got a little discount because of the content I'm doing, but a few thousand bucks almost. I probably could have gotten a better discount if I owned a shop. So this is all gonna come together. Um, a lot of density in this little place. It's 1,200 square feet. Um, I'm uh, working on building and designing a home uh, so that the garage in my house will be about 2,400 square feet. Um, so it'll be about double the size of this. Uh, but this is a you know my next step in uh, in in garage, and um, I'm hoping that we learn some lessons here and we figure some things out and we're able to shoot some cool videos for you. I think the lighting's going to be great. We're going to learn a lot there and be able to provide you that that resource. We're going to learn about how, a lot about how these machines work. Hey, worst case scenario, you'll have some video content of some amateur messing with it, so you'll know what to ask when you go to have your tires mounted and balanced. My guess is by the end of this, we'll have new techs watching our videos on how not to do it. Um, but um, I'd wager by the end of this, we'll probably get, I'll probably get pretty good at mountain, mounting uh, tires, wheels and tires, because I'm going to be doing it on really expensive stuff with really nice tires. So I think we have, uh, you know, we have room to fit. I could probably fit five cars in here, but I think three is the comfortable, comfortable number. Um, and uh, we thought about doing an auto stacker uh, where the mounting and balancing is, but because I just chose to put those here, um, we didn't do that. I'll just have to keep my cars, um, just not get too many of them uh, because I've only got so many spaces until I get my new house. Then I'll be able to have a few more. So I think that's about the extent. There's probably a lot more uh, that I'm missing here, but we're gonna have awesome audio, awesome lighting, great tools, amazing cabinets, a cool desk setup, the ability to mount and balance tires, the ability to dry ice detail. I wouldn't call it dry ice cleaning because we're not gonna be doing a lot of dry ice restoration. We're not gonna be doing any of that here, but doing some spot cleaning, engine bay, stuff like that. Eventually we'll have an exterior wash bay. We'll be able to wash cars, use pneumatic tools, it's going to be a fully functioning, working masterpiece uh, when it's done. And yes, I do work on cars in here. We will occasionally spill some oil and transmission fluid, um, but uh, this is this is going to be a fully functioning um, uh, wannabe's dream. So I'm excited for it. Anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for following along, and stay tuned. We're going to do individual videos on each part and piece as we put this thing together. And then, of course, it's always helpful if you go to obsessedgarage.com. You buy this stuff from me uh, for falling on the sword of doing what it is I love. So it's kind of cheating. I do what I love doing, and then you get to buy the stuff, and it's a win for everybody. We'll just call that an equal exchange in value. Anyway, stay tuned for more crazy. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.